Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the use of anabolic steroids and other performance enhancing drugs used in mixed martial arts, both in the past and in present day. As in any sport or competition, people will always be willing to do whatever it takes to win and to gain an advantage on their competition. In the context of athletics, that often includes the use of prohibited substances such as testosterone, anabolic steroids, human growth hormone, EPO, banned stimulants, and a host of other anabolic agents. Anyone who's been an MMA fan for at least 10 years has seen both polar opposites of the spectrum of chemical use in the UFC and MMA. On one side of the spectrum, you have present-day UFC, which has one of the greatest anti-doping programs in the history of professional sports. This very strict program is run by USADA, the United States Anti-Doping Agency, who does completely random out-of-competition testing. This makes it very difficult for athletes to find a window of time to use banned substances. It's an extremely successful program at catching potential cheaters. So effective that many people believe it's actually overkill with the amount of false positives that come from over-the-counter supplements and also in the case of certain international fighters, false positives from the food supply. Nonetheless, if you are in the UFC in 2018, it's going to be very difficult to get away with using performance enhancing drugs and not getting caught doing so. On the other side of that spectrum, we look back just a few years ago at what I like to call the Wild West days that took place in Japan with pride fighting. The difference between present day UFC drug testing and the drug testing that took place in Pride couldn't be any more polar opposite. In that, the fact was Pride did absolutely no drug testing for performance enhancing drugs. Not only did they not test for these substances, it was even put in the contracts that anabolics would not be tested for. This is another way of saying, hey guys, take all the steroids, HGH, and EPO you want. Take anything and everything because there will be no downside to you doing so. No suspensions, no fines, all we care about is the end product, and that end product being amazing, crazy, wild fucking fights. Now let's just be honest here, it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to look at some of these old pride fights from the late 90s and early 2000s, and realize that these guys were on as much shit as they could inject in their bodies. That's just the honest truth. With that being said, don't be fooled. The fighters in the United States were also using a lot of anabolic steroids at that time as well. The UFC is run by athletic commissions, and until USADA took over the anti-doping program for the UFC, these state athletic commissions were the ones who were responsible solely for drug testing these athletes. Unlike MMA throughout the 1990s, where anyone could take anything they wanted, commissions started implementing PED testing in the early 2000s. So what does that mean? Does that mean that these fighters could no longer use performance enhancing drugs? No, that absolutely was not the case. What that meant was athletes needed to be smarter and needed to be more calculated with their use of drugs. These athletic commissions were calling what they did drug testing, but that's not what it was. In reality, it was IQ testing. The only people who tested positive for steroids under these commission's guidelines were people who were stupid. From the time commissions started implementing drug testing in the early 2000s until USADA took over the drug testing protocols around 2016, the only testing that was regularly done was either a couple days before the event or right after your fight took place. What does that mean? That means when you do not have a fight scheduled, you can use all the steroids and HGH that you wanted to. You could also use PEDs throughout your entire fight camp. All you needed to do was know how long these substances would last in your system. So to simplify, what people would do was load up on anything they wanted to use in the offseason when they didn't have a fight scheduled. Then what they would do was plan out their drug use over the length of their fight camp. Typically, fighters will have around 8 weeks to prepare for a high level MMA fight. So, all they needed to do was cut out their drugs two to three weeks before the competition occurred. Some PEDs and anabolic steroids stay in your system much longer than a couple weeks, 
So the solution is to simply not use those specific steroids. Just use something else, just as effective, that clears the system faster. Also, in those days, HGH and EPO were not even being tested for. Some of these substances didn't have a testing protocol for a very long time, and even when the testing became available, it was very, very expensive. So athletic commissions would almost never test for these substances. Fighters could use these drugs as much as they wanted, with zero fear that they would ever be caught. The UFC was much like Major League Baseball in the late 90s and early 2000s, in that the mentality was use or lose, meaning that there was an understanding that to a great degree many of the competitors were also using some form of PEDs. Guys knew this and were aware, so many turned to using steroids not to gain an advantage over their opponent, but to simply even the playing field, knowing that the person they are going to compete against is not going to show up as a natural athlete. So you even that gap by using these drugs as well. And for the people out there who may not believe what I'm saying, I can give you a very specific example. Look no further than UFC 73. On July 7, 2007, a lightweight title bout took place that saw then lightweight champion Sean Shirk defend his title with a unanimous decision win over Hermes Franca. During the post-fight drug testing, the California State Athletic Commission announced that not only did Hermes Franca fail his drug test for anabolic steroids, but lightweight champion Sean Shirk also tested positive for anabolic steroids. Both men were suspended and Shirk was stripped of his world title. It seems to me like these two gentlemen had an understanding that they were going to fight on a level playing field, just not the one people thought it was going to be. With the implement of USADA, the fighters trying to gain an advantage are getting caught. While I am sure there is still rampant PED use in other promotions, such as Bellator and Ryzen, USADA has made a big impact throughout the sport in my opinion, and has cut down significantly the use of anabolic steroids across the sport of mixed martial arts. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you think people are still out there cheating, or do you think that it's a much cleaner sport than it used to be? As always guys, keep it positive, keep it passionate, thanks for watching.